Welcome back to the Take Your Life Back Summit, your roadmap out of chronic pain, fatigue, and autoimmune disorders. And I'm your host, Dr. Heather Yost. I am excited to announce today's special speaker and my friend, Dr. Jonathan Tate. He is actually a medical doctor and Dr. Tate is triple board certified in physical medicine and rehabilitation, as well as sports medicine. Dr. Tate is part of the research faculty at the University of Arizona and is a consultant for their athletic, athletics department. He is the founder of Rejuve Medical Southwest in Tucson, Arizona. His practice specializes in the use of regenerative medicine treatments, including stem cell therapy, therapy platelet-rich plasma therapy or PRP, and prolotherapy to help patients heal injuries and degenerative conditions of the joints and spine. His process for treating patients follows a comprehensive functional medicine evaluation to discover and treat the underlying factors that prevent healing, contribute to neuromuscular degeneration, and otherwise keep patients from their highest quality of life. I have been looking forward to this interview for weeks, Dr. Tate, so thank you for being here um, and welcome to the Take Your Life Back Summit. Thanks for having me, I'm excited too. I wondered if we could just, before we dive in and talk a little bit more about what you do, and we have so many things to cover, could you just tell me, how did you get to where you are? Why do you do what you do, and why are you so passionate? Um, well, this would have to go back all the way to my first year of medical school, and really sitting in an anatomy lecture, lying on the floor, actually, in the middle of a lecture, uh, because I had so much pain in my back and into my leg, that I couldn't sit through lectures. Um, so I had herniated a disc in my back about four months prior to starting medical school. And I went through kind of the conventional treatment path for that, um, looking at physical therapy, looking at um, medications, and um, even had some interventional pain procedures, some injections to try to help the pain, but um, it really wasn't happening. And ultimately, I spent my spring break um, instead of hanging out on a beach, I was hanging out on a hospital bed and uh, I ended up getting surgery my first year of medical school. So I think that point really changed uh, or that experience changed the trajectory of, of what I was looking at career wise, uh, what I wanted to do and uh, what I experienced living through that. Um, and the story didn't end there. You know, I've had some kind of bumps in the road since then, you know, a recurrence a couple of years later and then. Things were great for about 10 years. And um, then in 2012, I kind of had another misadventure on, on an adventure. So I like to do things like hike and um, get out in nature. And, um, you know, I, I woke up one morning and uh, had, you know, similar symptoms kind of in my leg again. And I kind of pushed through it and ended up kind of in a really bad way after that. And, um, through that experience, I was out in practice at the time and, and thinking about how I was treating patients and I, you know, using a more comprehensive approach, but felt like we were missing on things. And, and when I started to try to heal my own body to get back you know, from that injury so I could be the best for my patients, the, the conventional uh, ways of looking at it, the very treatments I was doing with my patients weren't really working for me. Um, so it really, that kind of set me on this course to, to get into functional medicine at a deeper level um, and, and really regenerative treatments that I do now. And that, that really helped me recover, you know, from that uh, time forward and really led to me building a practice around that. Before we go into those exact regenerative treatments, can we just talk about pain? Like what is pain? What is the body trying to tell us? Well, pain, you know, first of all, it's a very unique, uh, very personal, very individual um, experience, you know, and I think we, when I say we kind of conventional medical model, or um, when we look at pain, the pain's just seen as this entity, we hurt, right? So then we want to simplify the treatment to that, to like a one dimensional thing we can do to help that hurt. It's okay, here's a, here's a medication, you know, here's something to take the pain away. Um, but I think pain is, is a multifaceted thing. There's, there's, you know, a lot of unique elements for each person and, and how it impacts them. So defining pain is just that it's a very unique, um, personal experience. You know, it's not just purely physical. I mean, it's, it's, it's emotional, it's psychological. 
Um, and, you know, and it's far reaching in the impact that it can have on somebody's health where, and their quality of life when we look at it that way. So I don't think we can just make it this one little thing, like this is pain and we treat it with this one thing here. I think you really have to dive in you now with that patient and figure out what are the underlying driving uh, factors for that and, and what can we change. So pain being multifaceted like that, um, I remember you saying to me one time that chronic pain, you don't really like, you don't really like people calling it chronic pain. Can you explain right. that? Yeah, I, I explain it to my patients this way. I have personally lived with pain since age 23. I'm 41 now. Hmm. So I have some experience with pain, but I don't consider myself a chronic pain patient. You know, there's things in my body that talk to me. So pain, you know, is kind of that signal. Um, that coaches me that when I'm getting a little bit lazy in my approach to how I'm taking care of myself, I may experience a little bit more pain, right? So I need to, to listen to those signals that my body's given me, right? And say, what am I not doing right in my lifestyle right now? You know, what's my sleep like? What's my stress like? You know, how, how dialed in am I with my nutrition or my exercise? Have I been a little lax or lazy? And, and we all get there, you know, I'm not perfect. Um, I'll skip workouts. I'll eat things occasionally I'm not supposed to be. And, and my body lets me know. So I think if we listen to our body, it's got a great built-in signaling system to tell us when we're not at our best. And, and then we got to heed those signals and seek out the people. If we can't figure out what those signals are telling us to, to get with the people that can help us sort out that you know, signaling that we're getting. I like that. I like that. You had said um, prior when we talked that it's persistent, not chronic. Don't yeah. call it chronic or you become the pain. Yeah. So I like that terminology better. You know, I, I can say I have persistent pain, um, but it doesn't define who I am. It doesn't limit me in life. It doesn't keep me from working. It doesn't keep me from doing the things I enjoy recreationally. Um, you know, so there is a persistence of it that I'm always working to lessen, you know, and, and keep in the background, not have it in the foreground kind of driving who I am as a person or, you know, patients sometimes when they hear this term, you know, you're a chronic pain patient. You know, it's like, it's become this thing that we just, you know, it starts to become the shrug the shoulder. We don't know why you're here. And, you know, and the road for you isn't a really bright looking road ahead of you. It's just kind of like now we're in management mode. So that's another term I don't like, you know, I used to be called when I, when I look at kind of how I was coded and, you know, insurance is, um, they would say pain management. I kind of bristle at that term too, because pain management also kind of indicates there's really nothing to do for this. So we're just going to manage it. Right. And we do a lot of this right. management of not only pain, but disease in our country. So we've become a disease management system and a pain management system rather than a treatment system, uh, and a true healthcare system to say, let's treat that pain. Let's treat that disease. So those, those terms I try to like remove from my own vocabulary and help my patients do the same because I think then it takes on that psychological, you know, undertone of, man, this is, this is really bad and there's not much to do for you. So, hey, kind of live with it. You're, you're this chronic pain patient now. Yeah, you become the pain, as right. you said. I like that you said that. Can we go over some stats as to how many people are suffering with pain in the United States and in the world? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I look at this globally, but, you know, obviously I'm having the most impact on, you know, here at home in the U.S. and in the patients I see. But, you know, depending on what source you look at, they'll put it anywhere at 116 to 120 million plus people in the United States are living with some form of daily pain, you know, that has a negative impact on their life, obviously. So that's a huge stat, um, 120 million people. And if we look at kind of how we approach it. So back to that, here's pain, and we're going to do this one thing for it, which is give you medication. Um, we're, we're over consumers of a lot of things in the United States, um, but, but we're over consumers of, of pain medication. So if we look at, you know, what we hear a lot about in the news is opioid medications. You know, there, this is a tough issue because a lot of people are on these medications and, and the prescribing of it may have been pretty loose, you know, for years. And now we're seeing the issues with that. A lot of people are on these meds. There's not like a clear pathway for them. Um, but a stat that will really kind of blow your mind is Americans consume 80% of the world's opioid medications. That's, you know, an estimate, but based on, you know, different sources and 
articles that have been written about this. So 80%, yet we're 5% of the world's population. So we use a, we use a lot of medication. Um, and, you know, beyond like cancer uh, drugs, pain medications or pharmaceuticals for pain are the second biggest category of prescribed medication in the U.S. What is the first biggest prescribed? Um, uh, various uh, medications for cancer is number one. Oh, oh I see. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I That's you. the biggest class of medications. Second biggest class of prescribed medications would be pain medications, of which opioids you know, are, are top in that category. Right. Um, so many patients you know, come to see me and they say, well, I don't take those painkillers. I'm not on the opioids, but they're taking, say, anti-inflammatory medications. Like you know, those are said, like a Tylenol and ibuprofen. Correct. So there's, you know, up to, I think, 65 of those now that are available, prescribable um, or available over the counter, which I think gives this um, illusion of these are safe. Uh, you know, they're sold over the counter. There's no big deal. I can take these, you know, to help my pain. You know, the commercials just say, hey, don't let the pain slow you down. Take a couple of these and keep going. Right. So again, don't listen to those signals, just mask them, you know, cover them up, put them in the background there and just keep going with what you want to do in life rather than kind of listen to your body and what it's telling you. But so that's another huge category. And, you know, and those can range from $4 a month to probably $1,500 a month. Um, and that's, you know, that's a big industry. Uh, you know, we know this pharmaceutical industry is huge, but those just kind of final point on those NSAIDs. I mean, they are one of the number one reasons people land in the emergency room, you know, with GI bleeds. And, you know, there's over 100,000 hospitalizations a year because of those medications. And of those hospitalizations, you know, the stats say about 16,000 plus patients die per year just as complications of using NSAIDs, things like ibuprofen, things like naproxen and, and those type of medications. So it's they're not benign medications, and unfortunately, people that don't want to take opioids say, man, I don't want to go to that category of medication for my pain, so I'm going to take these NSAIDs because they're safer, right, because I don't want to get dependent or addicted to them because I hear so much about that in the news. So then I take these NSAIDs, but then they can still, you know, end up bad as well. So but I don't think, again, it's back to that simplification um, that people are using to treat the pain, and it's it's really not their fault. You know, it's not the patient's fault. It's kind of the system and what's presented to them as a way to treat the pain. Right. I just want to reiterate what you said is that just because it's over the counter doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe. And yeah. that there's people that are coming in with GI bleeds, um, 16,000 people dying every year due to those GI bleeds. So it's something to be taken seriously if you're going to be doing these medications. Um, don't just assume because it's over the counter means it's safe. Yeah, no, it's, it's tough. And we, I mean, we can take it multiple directions. Not everything's sold over the counter, even though it's labeled, it's sold in reputable stores. It, right. It doesn't communicate the safety of it. I think you still, you know, should be getting direction on it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's no different than a lot of things. If we're not an expert mechanic, we probably wouldn't start pulling apart our car in the garage and see if we can fix it. So right, right. You know, with this kind of stuff, even though it's readily available, like I can buy parts at a hardware store or a, you know, an auto store and try to reassemble my car. I probably wouldn't without somebody's expert advice on how to do it. Right. right. Um, it's the same with these medications. You know, we can get them. They're available. Same thing with supplementation. You know, we can go into that realm and look at the same, same idea. Where are you sourcing your supplements from? You know, what are you buying? If you're buying it online, can we really know what you're taking? Um, so, you know, those are tough things because I think people are out there searching for answers. It's part of why they're on this summit, you know, right. right. Um, but, you know, I think taking the information from this and finding somebody in, in their own community that can really guide them um, and be that expert to, to put them on the right pathway, um, you know, it's, it's critical for them to have success. Right. I'm glad that you said that. I think so many people in our culture and society um, maybe go to a grocery store, get an over-the-counter medication, hoping it's like the name it and the blame it game. Yeah. They want to name it, they want to blame it. But we do the same, our culture does the same thing with vitamins and nutrients. And we have to realize there's a time and a place for everything. I mean, there is a time and a place for an NSAID, but that's not health care, that's sickness care. There's a time and a place for vitamins, but it, all this should be guided. People yep. should be coached through it. 
If I can um, jump from pain to inflammation, I love how you describe inflammation. Can we talk about inflammation as, as a step of healing and yeah. how it's not necessarily a bad thing? Yeah, so it's actually, a, it's a key step. We, we think about, you know, most people in their life have, have experienced some type of injury. I use ankle sprain, you know, because it's something we've all probably tripped, stumbled, sprained our ankle. Ugh, we know what that feels like. But what happens in the mechanism of that ankle sprain is if you roll your ankle and you strain a ligament, so when you, you know, have an ankle sprain, what is that? So you've, you've taken some of the ligaments that stabilize, you know, usually the outer portion of the ankle and you've stretched those ligaments out a little bit. So when you stretch those ligaments, you know, we'll, we'll rupture a couple little capillaries or blood vessels that will dump some, you know, cells into that area. We trigger some inflammation. And that's why we feel sore. That's why our ankle may swell. But if we let the body work through the process as it's designed to do, this innate healing process requires inflammation to then recruit the cells, you know, kind of come in there and fix the damage. So clean up the mess that you created, then attract the right cells into that area, and then remodel that tissue. And that tissue becomes strong and resilient again, if we give it that environment, if we let it walk through those steps. So if we don't walk through that step from injury, then to inflammation, and then over here to healing, if we kind of short circuit this middle step, exactly by doing what, taking those anti-inflammatory medications, for instance, would block potentially that healing step, that middle step that we need to get to healing. So, you know, that's another issue with those medications. If we're chronically living on those medications, as many patients I see are, um, they are not allowing their body to really resolve that inflammation to move on to healing. So they kind of sit there in this spin cycle. Um, it's blocking the symptoms, but it's not allowing healing. So it's different if we move to things that can help modulate that inflammation so that they don't experience as much pain or discomfort, but it's not a pharmaceutical block where not only are we blocking the pathway there, but we're blocking other pathways in the body that require inflammation to some degree for chemical processes to happen. And that's why we see the side effects we do with those medications, whether it's GI or otherwise. Um, so, you know, one of the first steps that I look at to get people healing is evaluating, are they taking those kind of medications? Um, if so, what can be the substitute that we can use? Because sometimes we have to treat symptoms while we work on the longer term uh, fix to the problem, you know, but we don't want to live in the world where we just work on the symptoms. Because that's not going to get the resolution. That's not going to get the, the end result that patients want to feel better. Yeah, I like that you said that you can't only work on symptoms. You've got to work on long-term solutions. This is a great segue to, into what you do, which I find to be so fascinating with stem cells um, and, and platelets. Most people have, I think most people have probably never heard of this, but right. you're sort of, you're sort of harnessing the innate healing potential of each person's body by using what the body has. Can we go, I don't even know where you should start with that, whether it's stem cells or platelets. <laughs> yeah. but I love it. Let's go into what you do in your office and how you help people and what that means. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think the easiest way to look at it is you hit it right on the head. So we have certain systems in our body and certain cells in our body that they're constantly out on patrol looking for areas of damage in the body and they're stimulating healing. So we got to pull back from that for a minute to say, okay, what's the foundation? You know, what, what's going on in that patient's body? And that's what we have so many experts talking about in this summit, right? What are the foundational things that we need to be looking at first and foremost to get the body in a healing state? right? Not a catabolic state where we're breaking down the body and it can't heal, but we got to get it optimized in a sense. So now these innate healing systems that we have can work better. So some patients come in and they say, you know, I want this treatment. You know, this is going to fix this issue. I read about it. I want it. I want stem cell therapy. And I start evaluating kind of their, their intake form and looking at, okay, let's start with, you know, your overall health. You know, if you're carrying more weight and you're in this kind of inflammatory metabolic state, you know, when you're kind of sick, are we going to be able to really harness those cells that are kind of sick and put them in this area of your body and, and get them to heal? Um, so I start the process in my practice by really looking at that. We really take a deep dive on their lifestyle. 
you know, get their sleep dialed in, get their stress managed because some people, they don't sleep and they operate under extreme stress all, all, all day. And, and we're kind of burning ourselves at both ends. We can't really repair and recover like we should be. So that's really where it starts, you know, and, it, and we're digging into their nutrition and we're digging into their stress and we're digging into their sleep and exercise. And really who are the people around them? You know, who's supporting them on this journey to get better? You know, and that's a huge, huge thing I look at with patients because the psychology of getting better and having a team around you that's focused on the same thing will ultimately hope, help you get to that goal. It's not just me, but who else in their, their immediate social network. Um, and now we have the extended social network online, of course, but um, who are those people that can really support them? So that's the foundation. And then if we get to what do we actually do? So now we're taking these cells and we're harnessing them by taking, taking them from your body, right? So if we look at platelets, for example, we can start with that. Um, so platelets, everybody's kind of had a cut on their finger or their arm at some point. And so platelets will show up and they'll activate. And when they activate, they'll start some clotting, which will stop the bleed so you don't sit there and bleed out. But then they're orchestrator cells. So they'll also start signaling by releasing a lot of these growth factors. They start pulling in all these cells that we need to repair because the body is signaling the body to tell it what it needs to heal, right? Based on the damage you did. So did you just cut the skin or did you cut you know, part of a muscle or did you cut part of a ligament or tendon? What was the injury? But the body understands based on that cell to cell communication what it needs to heal. And it brings in the building blocks and it heals. So really all we're doing with these treatments is, is we're gaming the system a little bit, but we're finding this area, whether it's a ligament, a tendon, a joint, cartilage in the joint, um, structures that support the spine. And we're figuring out where that weak point is. We're figuring out where the body hasn't been able to continue to kind of turn those wheels on healing. And so they've been left in this state of kind of partial healing. So now we can localize those cells into that area. We can re-stimulate you know, that innate healing process and, and not kind of block it because of our lifestyle or block it because of those medications and let it happen. And then the body gets to a point of healing. Um, so that's platelets. Stem cells are a very unique cell in the body because they have this unique capacity to call, uh, it's called differentiation. So now these cells can be, um, the easiest way to look at it is we have injury. We're, we're giving off kind of this distress signal. Say it's knee arthritis. I see this a lot. So knee aches. I can't get up and walk on it because it hurts. So the cartilage or the structures around the joint now have failed. And so they're giving off this distress signal. And so we can take these stem cells and inject them into that environment. We're doing this under ultrasound guidance so we can be precise in our location of these cells. But these cells will actually home to that area. So we have this distress signal, and then these cells actually home right to that area. And then they can quiet that cell signaling, kind of that distress signal. But stem cells are very unique because now they can differentiate or they can grow into that type of cell. So it's like a stem on a tree or a plant. It can grow into another stem. It can grow into a leaf. It can grow into a flower. It can grow into a fruit. Um, but these stem cells can differentiate and actually repair and rebuild that very tissue that's failing. Um, so they're a very powerful cell in the body. Um, and we're basically, like you said, we're harnessing this innate healing capacity of the body. I'm not burning structures, blocking structures, cutting out structures, and really damaging your body to make pain go away. I'm actually using your body to help it heal. You know, And that's why this stuff is, is really incredible because um, you know, it's, it, it's not really that invasive of, of a procedure, but it's really harnessing what, what your body needs to heal. You know, we're, we're, we're not really doing things that are foreign or unnatural to it. Um, we're using things readily available to us to just help you heal. I know it's crazy cool that you can use your body to help you heal and it's not magic in a syringe. It's science. Yeah. And you're yeah, and that's what, that. it's great. I'm yeah, many people, they come in, they're looking for that, man, this is just going to, you know, really fix this. If I can just take these cells and I can just inject them and it's going to go repair everything in my body. Um, and it has a good chance to do that if, if we get the, the environment set up for it. You know, we got to have the environment in our body ready to kind of receive that treatment. If there's just all this chaos in our body, um, chaos in our lifestyle, um, it's going to be tough for our body to really 
channel its energy that it needs for that healing. Right. Um, so it's, it's definitely our process is unique because we're kind of blending this world of functional medicine and evaluating those aspects that the person probably has never had looked at for them, kind of seeing what are those barriers, you're removing those barriers for healing, and then we apply this treatment, and then people just, you know, do great. So, so in a nutshell, you're really blending a healthy lifestyle with your treatments, and what you're saying is by doing that, you get quite a, or a, a bet, much better outcome with your clients. Yeah, I think, you know, I'm confident that our process and the way we do it, um, it's much different. There's many clinics out there. If, if people start, you know, searching, okay, where is this stuff going on in their town, their part of the country? Um, at one point last year, I saw an article that said there's over 400 clinics in the United States providing stem cell therapy. Um, so what form of stem cell therapy are they providing? Um, you know, and that's probably a, a topic for another day, but, um, you know, how is their process delivered? You know, what are they really looking at? Do you just come in and they say, yes, we can fix you. Stem cells amazing. It fixes everything. Um, this is incredible stuff. Where do you want to do it? When do you want to sign up and let's go? Or are they asking you those questions? You know, are they bringing up, like I have this, you know, people gripe about filling out my intake paperwork because it's so long, but this is the only way I get to know what's really going on in their life that could be um, disrupting their ability to heal because if you're going to come get this treatment I want you to have the highest level of success with the treatment and so if I see these things as barriers I may tell a patient that we're not going to treat you right away I would rather spend two to three months working on getting your health where it needs to be so that when we do the treatment you'll have more success with it and that's really the difference in our process and that's why I know we get better results than clinics that will just again take the you know, the patient that maybe not be as healthy or sick. And like I said before, kind of taking those cells that are not at their best, taking them out and injecting them back into this area, hoping they're going to heal that. Well, it just doesn't make sense looking at it on the surface. If these cells aren't at their best, they're not at their healthiest, and we're putting back in, they may do something, they may help you, but not as much as if we get you healthy first. Right. And honestly, listening you say that, I have people too that complain about my intake paperwork. And I just want to say to everybody listening, do you want a doctor that goes the extra mile or do you want the minimalistic like paperwork? I mean, we should be applauding doctors like you. The client, the client should be saying, thank you for being so thoroughly invested in my health care that you're, you're asking me to fill out eight to 12 pieces of paper. That's what this type of health care is all about. We're diving deep. We're getting below the surface. We're looking at the root cause of everything going on. So I just want to say, I applaud you, like build your paperwork. As much as you want. <laughs> Mine's not even the longest. There, there's another person on our panel this, uh, this month that has one even longer than mine. So uh, so but like, why? like love it up, enjoy yeah, that but, out. Get the best but like you said, that, that depth of exploring really what's going on in so many areas of, of somebody's life is what allows us to see, you know, where the issues lie and, and where we can make the, the, the most progress for them by keying in on those things. Right. And for the listeners here, if you're going to get better results, you have to have better care and it's going to start with a proper intake and understanding you and communicating with you. I do want to, I think a lot of the listeners who are saying stem cell, platelet rich, PRPs, how does that work? Is it a one and done? Do they go in, they get this one and done treatment if their lifestyle is correct and everything's perfect or is it a multiple treatment plan? It's a great question. It can be either. Um, you know, and I, I hear often kind of my colleagues that don't really understand this process. It's not their training. It's not what they've spent their life's work kind of working on. And they hear what I'm doing and it's like, oh, well, that can't possibly work for somebody in their 60s or 70s or 80s even because, you know, those cells, they're just not going to be so vibrant anymore and lively. They're just kind of like old. And so if you take those cells, it's really not going to do anything. And so, it, you know, they kind of, I'm not sure where they come up with that because it's not really founded in. Uh, science, it's true that as we age, again, the wheels turn a little bit slower in our capacity to regenerate. But until we take our last breath, our body is constantly, the default of our body is regeneration and repair. Now, how many things can impact that? What things can get in the way of that? And how fast can those wheels turn or not turn? Uh, depends a lot on those things we were talking about, our lifestyle and how dialed in we are in those areas. And then what I'm using these treatments for is that nudge. So if we get the things right, 
And then we're going to nudge you in the right direction and kind of pull you this way, pull you more into that faster regeneration cycle. Uh, because, you know, we don't want to like push the body when it's not ready to be pushed because, you know, we're not going to get the result we want. So with some patients, you know, and, and I got a couple examples of this, you know, I have a guy in my practice who's, he's just phenomenal. He's, he's been a basketball player his whole life. He plays in the senior Olympics. Um, and, you know, I think he's pushing 80 now. And he had an issue that he came in to see me for with an Achilles problem, his Achilles tendon. The past couple of years have been giving him an issue, had a partial tear in it. And I gave him my talk and I said, this is how these cells work and this is what we're going to do. And for his case and his injury, we use platelets. And I always tell my patients it could take more than one treatment because we're going to stimulate healing and it's going to go through a process over six to eight to 10 weeks that the body is going to go through those steps to heal and repair. And then we're going to see what you have. And my goal for my first treatment is always to get somebody 70% or more better in regards to their pain function or otherwise. That's my personal goal that I want to hit for every patient. In his case, we did one treatment and he came back six weeks later and said 99% better, right? So again, results may not be typical, but you know, some people one and done, and this guy was dialed in with his health, right? He was doing all the right things. We didn't have to work very much in that area. And we applied this treatment and he did phenomenal. So, um, but with other injuries, and if it has been a more persistent problem for people, and there is a, a more severe injury or the extent of the damage that's been done is more, it could take more treatments, obviously, to, to rebuild that tissue. So, you know, that's the one thing that's hard to predict. Um, in our process, we look at it treatment to treatment. Some clinics, they'll sign people up, and I, I hear about it because people will come for second opinions or they've been treated elsewhere before. They said, well, we, you know, they said I need five treatments. You know, we're going to do one every six weeks, you know, five treatments, or we're going to do stem cell. We're going to do another one at six months and another one at a year because we've got to keep this effect going. And I don't really subscribe to that. You know, I want to say treatment to treatment. Are you where you want to be? Right. Is your quality of life now what you want it to be? Is that pain problem quieted down? Can you do the things functionally, recreationally you want to do? And if you say, I'm happy with this. Great. That's where we're, that's where we're going to end it for now. And then we're going to optimize your body to try to keep it there. Right. By, by again, keying in all, all those other things we need to do from a lifestyle standpoint or a nutritional standpoint. Um, but there is going to be some retreatment for most people, you know, younger people, they may have an injury, we get it to heal and they're great. You know, um, if you're a little bit older and that repair process or the amount of damage that's been done, has already been done. We can't, totally undo all that there is going to be some maintenance to this over time uh, but when it falls uh, for each patient is going to be again unique to their circumstances uh, but my goal again is to get them to that 70 to 80 percent or better improvement level mm -hmm. and then just work on what's that maintenance plan to maintain that so obviously to do any sort of prp or stem cell injection is going to have to be done in office or they're going to have to find an office that does that. But I love that you talk about healthy lifestyle. What would you tell our audience if there was one to two things that they could do today to improve their current lifestyle, what would that be? You have to sleep, right? So I, I'm big on this and I, you know, I, this is when our body repairs, right? It's yes. kind of like, I use a lot of analogies with my patients, but it's like, you know, the road crews that go out at night when there's less traffic on the roads, you know, they can block off lanes and get a ton of work done versus trying to do it during rush hour. Right. So, you know, your body is going to go into this repair state if we allow it to, if we're getting the time we need in that repair state. So we got to get quality sleep and we got to get enough of it um, because that's when our body goes to work repairing these things that have been ailing and failing for a little while. Um, and if we're shorting ourselves on sleep, um, you know, I see the high driving professionals that, you know, Hey, I can get by in four hours. Most people can't over time. It will catch up with you. Um, and then during the day, what's the environment you live in? You know, how are you ordering the steps of your day and your schedule so that you don't feel this constant pressure and stress all day where, um, you have that stress that is just chewing away at the body. So, I key in on those couple of things from the start with people. We got to get you sleeping if we're going to get your body repairing. Um, and then all the other things feed into that. You know, what are the things that support repair? Of course, the nutrition um, and exercise. When people hurt, they don't want to move. 
what your body needs to move. If we're talking about joint cartilage, it nourishes itself by loading and unloading. So if we're just sitting around doing nothing, the cartilage actually gets far more unhealthy than somebody that's moving. So even when we don't want to move, moving is going to help that body in that repair process. So again, these are really common sense, kind of fundamental things that are just oftentimes overlooked or not presented to patients. They're like, yep, we take an x-ray, you have arthritis, here's your options, take some NSAIDs. When that doesn't work, I'm going to shoot your knee with cortisone. And when that doesn't work, you get a knee replacement. It's very straight line down this path without even any discussion about the other stuff. Um, so that's, those are the two key things that I start with just to get that body back into, you know, a, a repair state. And I, I challenge my patients. I say, okay, do me this, like eight hours a night for the next two weeks, seven days a week, eight hours of sleep, come back in and tell me you don't feel better. Tell me your body doesn't feel better just in a two week span of time. So, um, but that's the challenge. We all have a lot on our plates. Um, you know, trying to prioritize, like I got to cut it off at some point to get myself in bed. Um, and I got to get myself out of bed, you know, and kind of get my body into this routine where it knows what it should be doing. When should it be repairing? When should it be awake? And, um, again, really easy things to do and it doesn't cost us anything, right? Just get in bed earlier. Right. right. Yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. If people want to learn more about you or learn more about what you do, how do they find you? So our website, you know, is the best, you know, resource that we're trying to build it as just that, you know, kind of a hub and a resource. Um, you know, it's getting better all the time. It's one of those things that never seem to have enough time to build it as great as we want it to. But we're each, each month, each quarter, we're trying to update things on there. So at Rejuve Medical, it's R-E-J-U-V, like Victor, Medical, S-W, like Southwest.com. So that's our website uh, for my practice. That's kind of our hub where we're building you know, we wanted to build it out as a resource so people can look at, you know, just as I described it today, we don't need to get much more complex than that. We don't need to get into the science. You know, I'm a scientist by training. I like to get into that nitty gritty biochemistry stuff, but we really don't have to get there to understand how this works. Um, but then we have all the research articles and things. If people really want to dive into this and say, does it really work? Where's the research? And right. this is a new technology, even at, approaching 10 years in our country that you know platelet therapy is a little bit older stem cell therapy is a newer thing but still stem cell therapy has been around almost that long 10 years um, it's a new technology you know this is this is a new thing that we're really on on, on really the leading edge of something that i firmly believe is going to revolutionize how we look at orthopedic problems Amen, uh, which, yeah. which many people are struggling with whether it's knee arthritis hip arthritis spine issues um, and it's going to be far less invasive than, again, those options that I, I presented earlier, which is just cortisone shots that mask the symptoms and actually contribute to more degeneration, which most right. people don't know if it's done over and over. Um, and, and then they lead on to, you know, bigger things like surgery. So this is that middle space where, you know, we can really have success with patients. And, and we're going to keep many of these patients from going on and needing a surgery, hopefully. Right. It's, it's truly exciting. And just back to the fact that it's your own body's innate healing that you're harnessing. It's, it's just crazy cool. Um, yeah. Before we wind down, I wondered if I could ask you just a couple of fun questions that I'm sure. asking all the experts. Yeah. I want to know if we were to um, if it happened upon your kitchen and open up your refrigerator, what would be two things that we would find in your refrigerator every single time? Piles of fruits and veggies. You know, that's, it's just loaded up. I mean, that's, that's in there for sure. Um, so I guess those would be the two biggest things that occupy the space in our fridge. Yeah. What about supplements or products? Like if you were stuck on a deserted Island and you could only have two, two supplement or products, what would you make sure you had on you? Wow. That's a good question. Um, I think I would say, you know, I, I've been taking a kind of a complete greens kind of formula for a long time. And I, and I think that really uh, helps me from a kind of a nutritional, I guess, insurance or protection standpoint. Um, and if I was looking at things to help with my own personal aches and pains that I do, because I'm always kind of pushing my body, probably curcumin, you know, I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. Um, personally, it works really well for me. Um, and, and similar, you know, omega-3 fatty acids, um, in, in some form, again, at, at, a, um, at a larger dose or, 
very helpful for modulation of that inflammation. Uh, and they're very key in kind of constructing new cells in the body when we're talking about this repair process. So yeah, you'll definitely see those in my fridge. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much for sure. being here. I really appreciate it. I think that we've all learned so much from the last 30 plus minutes. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, that is our episode of the Take Your Life Back Summit for today. Everybody that's listening, do not forget to watch your inbox tomorrow. We're going to bring you more awesome information, more experts so that you can continue to learn, that you can heal, you can take your life back and live the best life, everything that you deserve. Thank you. This is, again, Dr. Heather Yost. Take care, be well, and we'll see you tomorrow.